I had this radio career, which was a very, very cool career. Loved it. There was always somebody who had something they needed to talk to me about because there was some kind of meeting for somebody somewhere. And being in radio, the game was very clear. You're on the radio, if I talk to you, then you're gonna talk about my business. That was always what the game was. Well, the funniest ones were always club owners. Because club owners, they would give somebody a call, and it was always somebody I knew. And see, I was always in the club, right? So I would find myself sitting in somebody's club. They would invite me over for seafood night or something, and I would be sitting there talking to them. The owner would come out, and he would come talk to me, and he said, listen, you know, you're the radio man, so you know exactly what to do. You know exactly how to get it pumping in here. And what I would always find out is that when people were trying to do all of these nights at these clubs, and then you would see people roll out several different services and products with their businesses, their problem was they didn't want an audience on which they could focus. They basically wanted all the money at one time. I found that a lot of times when <coughs> businesses run into big problems, one of the problems that they have, and this is coming from somebody who's done PR and marketing, this is coming from somebody who spent a few years working for historically black housing university that really needed a singular strong message. And I found that I find that a lot of times when businesses fail, one of the problems they have is they fail to go after one customer who's going to remain faithful to that brand. What they decide they're going to do is try to get as many customers as they can from as many demographics as they can because they want all the money from everybody. And we all know it's just not that simple. We all know that if you try to go after too many people, then you wind up losing some people. Now in the nonprofit world, this is actually called mission trip. You have an organization that will say, hey, we are going to uh, do early childhood education. That's the mission of our organization. And then they'll see a grant. So they go after this grant. And the grant is for children in poverty. So the next thing you know, they have to create a program to satisfy this grant for children in poverty. So now they're early childhood education and they're serving children in poverty. So then they see another grant. The other grant, oh man, that's for kids with diseases. So now they go after that grant. <laughs> and the next thing you know, they got three programs. And one is early childhood, the other is kids with diseases, and the other would be kids in poverty. And then they see another grant. Now this one is for $50,000. They go after that grant, they start creating a whole new program, and then they start telling the executive director, listen, you're going to have to be the program manager on this one because we can't hire anybody else. But we can hire somebody if we get the grant, but for now, we need you to be over this grant that's for people with one leg who are homeless, okay? <laughs> so now, you have an organization whose mission is early childhood education and as a program serving homeless people with one leg. And you're trying to figure out, how did you get here? And the problem with di these kinds of situations is that you will have these organizations who will come to people like me and say, listen, we want some PR and marketing help. Cool. Tell, show me your programs. What's with this fourth program? How, what, what audience are we dealing with with this fourth program? And they'll say, oh, well, you know, uh, don't worry about that. No, this program is on your website. <laughs> You are publicizing this program, so I can't just not worry about it. Besides that, you have people who want to ask, what is your core message as an organization? So the danger here is that you have a bunch of organizations and businesses that decide that what they are going to do, they decide that they're going to try to be all things to all customers. But think about this. When a customer is attracted to a business, and think about the businesses that, not even yours, but businesses that you love, what attracts you to those businesses? They provide some, uh, a service or a product you want, and yep. for me, uh, it's service. Service, yeah, customer service? Yeah, yep. before, before, during, and after the sale. Thank you, yeah, what else? What yeah. else attracts you? Expertise. Expertise, what else attracts you? Probably price points. Right? Availability. 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 Location. 
branding. Some people see the branding on a business, they love the logo, they love the slogan, and they say, you know what, this seems pretty cool, I want to check them out. They go, they figure out, they love it. See, all of these things create one big message. Whether it's customer service, whether it's price points, whether it's a logo, it's a slogan, whether it's, even if it comes down to the personal brand of the owner. I mean, I know there are people who go to a business because they just love the owner. Could be, could be a business that charges more than a competitor, but they love this person. And that person helps carry a very powerful message. Or, even if it's not powerful, it's effective. But here's the thing. What happens when the message changes, when the customer service changes? What happens when something about the prices change? What happens when you have that owner or that manager who all of a sudden, eh, he's not so chipper anymore. He's not, he's not the happy person that you love to go in and talk to and to talk about your families. What happens? The message starts changing. And because the message starts changing, then the audience starts changing. Now you have a customer base that's starting to feel disenfranchised. And so what I'm thinking is this. I have three thoughts. And the three thoughts that I have are all designed to make sure that the customer base that you have is one that can remain tight and help you build your bottom line. And then also help you continue to fulfill your message. The first thought is this. Create a profile of your best customer. Create a profile. Who is this person? How old is this person? Is this person college educated or not? Or is this a person who lives in a certain area? Radio is fantastic at this. I mean, at FM 98, this is what we knew. We knew that if we wanted to maximize the brand of the radio station, we had to do things that were geared toward African-American women, ages 35 to 54, who lived within about three zip codes. We knew this. Some college education. It drove every decision we made. It drove the decision of the kind of music we played. I mean, at one time, we were Fantasia SFM. We played three of that girl songs at one time, and the <laughs> listeners ate it up. They loved it. We knew where to go. We knew where to do our promotions. We also knew what to say and what not to say. So the philosophy of the radio station when it came to the air personality was talk to the listener as if you're talking to a good friend, like one of your favorite female cousins. That became our philosophy. And that's the way a business can really thrive as well. When that customer walks in, and you know you've seen his face before, or someone calls you, that's your cousin. That, that's one of your best friends now. But find out who this person is. Where are, the, where are the other people like this customer? Which takes me to the second point. The second point is appeal to those customers. Like one way you can really appeal to that base customer that you have identified is as soon as you know who that is, help the, ask them to help you promote the business. Online reviews. If you know your, your business, has gained some ground, and you are, <laughs> you're moving, and you're grooving, and you're bringing in those customers, and things look good, online reviews, online reviews, online reviews. Now, let me just warn y'all about something. Don't have people plan reviews, like, you know, just don't do it, okay? I've seen some reviews that were just, you could tell that somebody's hot broken. You could just tell. I mean, there was one review for a caterer that I read, and it, it was hilarious. <laughs> the review read something like, I am so thankful for so-and-so's catering business. That potato salad is like the potato salad we had in Alexandria. I have never tasted food like this before, and God bless her for running such a good business. And I will always, always call her anytime I need her. Anytime! <laughs> and it was like five exclamation points. And I'm sitting there going, this is planned, stop, <laughs> right? So here's some other things you can do. In, in, in order to really appeal to that customer, appeal to that customer emotionally. What makes that customer tick? What's gonna keep them coming back? What about claims? Is there a claim that you can make about your business because you have this 
this, this, this customer, this laser focus of a customer who keeps coming in. You can definitely say, we serve the best such and such because blank. And then the other thing is, when it comes down to appealing to that customer, repetition. This is a great promotional tool. Great promotional tool. And you don't necessarily need uh, a radio commercial to do this. But you want this customer to carry the words of other customers. So repeat, repeat, repeat. Phone numbers, websites, slogans, whatever it is you need people to repeat, get them to repeat it. Have them be your mouthpiece. The third thing I would say is reward. Always reward your most loyal customer. That should be a no-brainer. But for some businesses, it's not. I mean, listen, I don't think that Kroger is the most amazing supermarket in the world, but I hardly shop anywhere else. Why? Because of the reward points and the gas. 40 cents off my, look, I just bought food for a cookout. I'm going to get my 40 cents off this gas, right? <laughs> and, that, and the reward system works. But hey, you don't have to do a reward system. You know, sometimes the reward system is just as simple as treating that customer like one of your own. And that's all the reward they need. Just knowing that they can come to you and feel as if they are valued is a reward for them. But you have coupons, you have giveaways, you have all kinds of ways that you can continue to reward your customer, that core customer who's going to keep your business afloat and who's going to always go out and be a mouthpiece. So the thing that I would say to summarize all of this is first of all, it's an investment. One of the things that I learned in doing PR marketing, especially on the marketing side, is people do not like to invest in marketing dollars. They hate it, mm -hmm. and I understand that. But if you really want to get from one step to the next step to the next step, it is something to think about. And I always try to think about the most cost-effective ways to do it. Now, understand, in the marketing world, there's a difference between cost-effective and <coughs> cheap. <laughs> you can be cost-effective, don't be cheap. That's when, that's when we start having problems. And the last thing that I would say is plan. Plan for these customers, conduct market research. And when I say market research, it doesn't have to be serving monkey. You don't have to spend a lot of money. But when I say market research, it's just as simple as every time you come in contact with a customer, collect information from them and keep a database, a good database, and maintain that database. And when you do that, you will find that not only will you have a great plan to keep this core audience of yours, but you can also put a plan so that you can get the next generation of core audience. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time.